uh, this is a, an exciting area. It's gotten a lot of attention lately. A lot of breakthroughs here in, in, um, in generative adversarial networks, okay, GANs. Now, these are based on what we call a two-player minimax game. And taking the principles from a two-player minimax game and applying it to artificial neural networks, where we're going to have two artificial neural networks that basically compete with each other. Now, uh, in many use cases, um, these models can learn to create data that is similar to data that we give them. And the objective then is to understand and explain the underlying structure of the input data even when there are no labels, so in an unsupervised learning fashion. Okay, so a lot of people, their initial work here using GANs has been on images, and I'll show you some examples of that. But then I'll show you an example I've worked up where I'm leveraging some of these techniques in combination with other techniques uh, where we're looking at metadata. Um, so let's start off with the more traditional uh, use cases here. So it's a two-player minimax game. We have two artificial neural networks competing against each other. The first network we call the generator. And in this use case, the generator is the forger, the counterfeiter. Its job is to look at the attributes of a real image and try to replicate that and synthesize that. And it's going to start creating a lot of images, okay? Um, its job is to generate and synthetically generate images. Uh, that's one network. The other competing network, remember two-player minimax, the second player is the discriminator network. And its job is to look at the images coming out of the generator and to determine whether it believes those images are real or fake. And this is all done in mathematics. Now this is a typical maximum likelihood problem. And traditionally you would use an explicit density function where if x is the input vector, the distribution of data concentration measures the log probability of a density function. But here in GANs we're using an implicit density function. So if the input vector has a high probability of being real, then the discriminator assigns a value of one. So if you get a value of one, those are keepers, if you will. They're very accurate uh, in terms of their apt attributes. So a 0.5, for example, would be an image that you would throw out, okay? It doesn't uh, really uh, match the original very well. Okay then, so again, formally describes a learning process using two-player minimax game. J superscript D is the cost function of the discriminator, which is the cross entropy cost associated with a binary classification problem. The process compares a single mini batch from sample data and fake da data from the generator, and the cost for the generator is the negation of the cost for the discriminator. Now that's the general principle behind it. You can do some interesting vector space computation, okay? These are some examples. So I can start to synthetically generate images using vector space arithmetic, for example, okay? A man with glasses minus a man plus a woman. Now, what I have done is turn my attention to medicine and um, applied this in a bit of a different way. Now, most of the examples we have seen uh, thus far have been on what I'll call more low resolution images. Now in medicine we deal with super high resolution. So there's some tweaking that has to be done with these techniques. Uh, and I won't get into all of the detail, but here's one I've worked up where I have an MRI image and then I have a positron emission tomography image. And in silico I can synthetically generate a PET MRI hybrid using a two-player minimax game technique with the equation that's, uh, that's there. And that's all the detail I'm, I'm going to provide here with that, okay? All right. Now, let me talk about a technique that I've worked up that I call exploitative GAN. All right. This is where I'm going to look at the, um, the attributes of data of molecular data, um, cellular data, very complex data, uh, not image data, but I'm applying some of these techniques along with a variety of other techniques 
in the mix. And in more advanced work, you're going to find that uh, you're bringing together a variety of different advanced techniques in a unique combination uh, to achieve a result. And this is certainly one example of that. All right, so the hypothesis here is, and I will describe uh, what these are in more detail here, but um, the hypothesis is that an exploitative GAN can uncover natural killer group 2D receptors for use by CAR T cell therapy in solid tumors. So let me go through and give you a little bit of a primer in terms of what some of this, this terminology means, okay? We have two ways I'm going to talk about here of killing cancer. The first is innate to your own immune system, and those are natural killer cells. They go to work every day. They kill cancer cells as, as well as viruses, and they're activated by binding to the antibody attached to a cell, displaying a peptide antigen through what we call MHC1, okay? Um, best to just show you an animation here of how this works. So that is a cancer cell, and we see antigens being expressed on its surface. In white, we'll see the natural killer cell. And it's going to bind uh, using a receptor. And when it does, it's going to penetrate the cancer cell wall and deliver its payload. And its payload is designed to cause apoptosis, which is the destruction of that cancer cell. All right? Very high-level sort of description of how that mechanism of action works, okay? So that's what is the innate technique that we all have. Now, many pharmaceutical companies are investigating something called CAR-T. And this involves removing white blood cells called T-cells from patients and introducing a new gene into the T-cells that enables them to recognize the cancer. After the gene is transferred and expressed, the T cells are then infused back into the patient where hopefully they start to attack the cancer. And that process looks like this. So you can see it's quite similar. And again, hopefully causing the destruction of the cancer cell. Now, these techniques to date uh, have not worked well, CAR T, uh, techniques have not worked well for solid tumors. But we know that natural killer cell receptors and those mechanisms of actions do work. So using a variety of techniques, can one start to discover maybe approaches um, where you could start to combine some of the what's available to us from NK in terms of receptors and start to think about applying those expressed as ligands um, for CAR-T use. And without getting into a lot of the detail, there's a lot here on this slide, but this is um, really what I call an exploitative GAN. So the decision tree we talked about earlier that I um, discussed in supervised learning, we're going to extend that tree um, and start to um, break out uh, activating receptors there. Um, now, when we define those receptors, it's quite complex data, so we'll probably use T-SNE as a data dimensionality reduction technique. And then you'll see there um, a list of receptors that are expressed uh, through an NK process, group 2D receptors. And now we've got an expression of ligands uh, there on the bottom right, and then above that, we now can start to identify solid tumors that could be addressed by um, natural killer cell uh, receptors for CAR-T. So can CAR-T start to exploit natural killer cell receptors? And there's a way of simulating all of this, again, in silico using uh, some of the techniques of a GAN, but there's a lot of other techniques in the mix that I won't really talk about here today, okay?